Hi there, today I'm talking about a paper I love, Applying Sparse Autoencoders to Unlearned Knowledge in Language Models by Farrell, Lau, and Conmi. I love this paper because it takes a simple idea and it applies it extremely well in experiments and results that are presented in clear ways. Let's dive in. Because language models are trained on the internet, they can unintentionally learn dangerous information that we need to remove before they're deployed. The specific example used in this paper was knowledge of how to create biological weapons. Current unlearning methods use fine tuning, which can work successfully, but is also an opaque process. This paper asks if we can use sparse autoencoders, also called SAEs, to precisely unlearn harmful knowledge in an interpretable way. If you haven't watched my previous video on SAEs, I would highly recommend you do so now so you understand the relevant concepts before you continue with the video. SAEs sit between model layers, encoding activations into sparse features and then decoding them back. When a biology-related feature activates, we can clamp it to a negative value, suppressing biology-related knowledge while leaving other capabilities intact. Well, how do we know which specific features of the SAE relate to biology? The authors do something clever, which is to take a retained dataset containing general knowledge and a forget dataset containing the specific knowledge they want to unlearn. They then pass these datasets through the model and record how often each feature of their SAE fires on each respective dataset. Their goal is to find features that activate as few times as possible on the general knowledge dataset, while activating as much as possible on the forget dataset. So they discard all features above a certain threshold sparsity on retain and take the top n activating features on the forget dataset. For their experimental setup, the authors use the 2 billion parameter models Gemma Instruct and Gemma 2 Instruct. The SAEs used each have 16,000 features and are trained at layer 9 and layer 3, respectively. First, let's look at using only one feature to steer Gemma 2B Instruct. As the negative clamping of the biology related feature increases, the probability that the model picks the correct answer to a biology question decreases from 100% to practically zero. It's also interesting to see that after a clamping value of 30, there isn't any extra return, and in fact, the cross entropy loss of the model starts rising steeply. Think of loss added as measuring how much our intervention is breaking the model's normal abilities to generate text. A higher value means the unwanted side effects of clamping are greater. What about if we intervene on multiple features? The authors create some really cool charts to investigate this. Our ideal result is a point as close to the bottom left corner, representing small side effects either in terms of loss added or performance on a general knowledge benchmark called MMLU, as well as high unlearning on the benchmark testing the stuff we want to unlearn, called a WMDP bio. The different color lines represent different values of n for selecting the top n features to clamp, and the gray dots represent a baseline measuring the performance of a fine tuning method called RMU. There are multiple gray dots because different hyperparameters were tested for RMU. In the first chart, we can see that the ideal number of features is 10, and that clamping 10 features has a lower loss added than fine tuning. In the second chart, we see less clear results. There isn't a best number of features, and RMU fine tuning retains more general knowledge than SAE clamping. It's important to note that the questions selected from MMLU and WMDP biobenchmarks are the ones Gemma2 always answered correctly, meaning that any change we see in these charts represents true unlearning and not a fault of the original model's knowledge itself. The last main experiment investigates whether SAE unlearning works by actually removing biology knowledge or just by breaking the model in a sense. Previous literature found that RMU might work by first detecting harmful prompts and then adding a large magnitude vector that pushes the residual stream out of distribution, in a sense overwhelming the model rather than truly removing knowledge. Could SAEs be working the same way? In our method, the encoder detects when biology features activate and the decoder then injects a large negative vector. This leads to the question of if a targeted decoder direction matters or if just the presence of a large vector accomplishes the unlearning task. They test this by selecting a random decoder vector for each of our biology related features. Each time one of our biology features is activated, the random vector is projected into the Gemma2 residual stream instead of the original vector matching the feature we want to remove. This figure on Gemma2 shows that projecting a random vector instead of the targeted one degrades performance on unlearning. However, when they ran this same experiment on Gemma1, this effect was contradicted, and random decoder vectors performed comparably to the targeted ones. The fact that for different models and SAE locations, such a different effect was observed tells us there's still a lot to learn about the interpretability of these models. This is one of my favorite papers, and I had a lot of fun explaining it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you found this video helpful, please consider adding a like to this video or subscribing. If you have a question, feel free to ask in the comments. Until I see you next, remember that papers are wonderful.